and welcome to the Inspired Overflow Radio Show. I am your host, Casey Starlong, and I'm so excited that the Lord has led you here for another week of the Inspired Overflow Radio Show. Now, if this is your first time ever watching Inspired Overflow, then I want to watch Inspired Overflow. We are more than just a radio show. We are actually a ministry, and our mission is designed to just encourage the entire world to love Jesus with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so we try to do that in a variety of different ways. So every now and again, we invite different guests. They come on and they share their testimonies. And every now and again, we invite different five-fold ministry leaders to come and share on a specific biblical topic. And then every now and then and again, God leads me to uh, share a word with the listening audience. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. But before um, I get into today's topic, I got to give a shout out to our show sponsors this week. They are the Revival Church, where Jason Bryant is the pastor. The Revival Church, they are hosting their back to school drive Saturday, August the 5th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. All of this takes place at Drake's Place Restaurant in their parking lot, which is located at 701 South Florissant Road in Ferguson, Missouri. And then the fun just isn't limited to that Saturday because then that Sunday, August the 6th, the Revival Church, they are hosting their Family and Friends Day. So service begins at 12.30 p.m. in the Revival Church. They are located at 8390 Latte Avenue, which is inside of the Asa Christian Academy in Hazelwood. So we thank our friends at the Revival Church for sponsoring um, and being a, just a great partner with us here at Inspired Overflow. Now, I also want to just acknowledge all of our friends who are watching today's broadcast on Facebook Live. If you have Facebook, I encourage you to just look me up on Facebook under Casey Star Long, and then that way you can just log in and see today's live broadcast. So I'm just waving and telling all of our Facebook friends, thank you so much for tuning in to the Inspired Overflow Radio Show. Now, I'm really excited about today's topic. We're going to be talking about healing, and I'm actually calling today's show Healing School. Now, I know school officially starts uh, for many uh, next month, but today we're going to go to school and we are going to uncover what God's Word says about healing. And um, I know we've done some shows in the past about healing and about increasing our faith, but the Lord put this topic on my heart to just encourage the body of Christ to just remind you that God desires for us to be healed, like His desire is to heal I think sometimes we hear uh, so many um, just devastating reports about different diseases and sicknesses and illnesses that sometimes we can become kind of bombarded with the way that the world thinks. But I want to remind us as believers in Jesus Christ that we're in this world, but we are not of this world, that what we really need to do is renew our minds with the word of God, through the word of God. And God's word um, is full. It's jam-packed of scriptures that remind us that Jesus came so that we could live life and live it abundantly. And we have so many scriptures of Jesus healing everyone um, that he encountered that was sick. And so the same God that was the same yesterday is the same God tomorrow um, and today. And so I really believe that today's show is just going to elevate and boost our faith. So after today's broadcast, you are going to be pumped up with faith to know that God is a healer. So I don't care if you got a migraine headache. I don't care if you got a backache. I don't care if you received a bad report from the doctor. We're going to go to the scriptures and we are going to apply what God's word says because we know that God's word is final. His word is complete. That if God's word says it, then we stand on it. Okay. We don't stand on what man says, but we stand on what the word of God says. So um, I'm going to just uh, go to some foundational scriptures. And I really like these scriptures because these scriptures really just set the foundation for me to just um, help me get centered and to understand that no matter what um, negative report I may have received or a family member may have received, this is what God's word says. So one of my first um, foundational scriptures when it comes to healing is Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 5. I'm going to be reading a lot of a lot of the Bible today, okay? Because this is 
This is what we this is what we anchor our hope in. And so Isaiah 53 verses four through five, it says, surely he took up our pain and he bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he and we're talking about Jesus Christ. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds, we are healed. So another version may say that by his stripes, we are healed. And basically what this scripture is saying, this is the uh, prophet Isaiah, he's prophesying. And he's talking about that Jesus, he bore, he bore our pain and he bore our suffering. Um, that all of the afflictions Jesus bore for us on the cross and um, the work that he did on the cross, every stripe, every lash that he took, he did it for us so that we could be healed. Now, this is a scripture that I stand on all the time, that Jesus stood in the gap and he took your sickness away. Jesus uh, stood in the gap and he took every pain and every affliction away. So this is the word of God that Jesus Amen. We're healed because of the work that Jesus has done on the cross. It may not be manifested yet, but this is what the word of God says. It says, by his wounds, we are healed. You are healed. You may be uh, waiting for the manifestation, but this is what the word, word of God says is that you are healed. Another foundational scripture, Psalm 103, verses 2 through 5. It says, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all of your sins and heals all of your diseases. I'm going to read that again. It says that he who forgives all of your sins, so we address that in Isaiah 53, that the that Jesus, he, he bore um, the, the work on the cross for our sins and also for our sicknesses. So this reminds us of that, that Jesus, he forgives us of our sins and then he heals us of all of our diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I love this scripture in Psalm 103 verses two through five because it reminds me that Jesus, not only does he forgive me of my sins, and this is something that I think a lot of Christians, sometimes we forget. We think about the work that Jesus did on the cross. He did it for salvation, but he also did it for our healing as well. So this word says that he heals us of all our diseases. So every disease, every sickness, everything that um, the world can come up with, the new name, bird flu, cancer, Alzheimer's, MS, lupus, Jesus heals of all diseases. And then you might say, okay, well, those are some Old Testament scriptures. Let's look at a New Testament scripture. First Peter 2 and 24, he actually references the Apostle Peter actually refer references Isaiah in the scripture. It says that he himself bore our sins, talking about Jesus, in his body on the cross so that we might die to our sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. And so sometimes I just find myself just declaring that word. You know, if I feel like um, a sickness is trying to uh, attack my body, if I feel like I'm getting under the weather, um, if my husband isn't feeling well, a family member, you know, I remind them that in the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. If you don't remember anything um, from today's broadcast, I want you to remember Isaiah 53. Okay, that's like a big foundational scripture. It says that by the stripes of Jesus, you have been healed. And sometimes you just have to declare that word. Um, one of the uh, teachers of faith and healing that I really um, enjoy listening to are Kenneth Hagin, who has since passed away, and Gloria Copeland, um, who is the wife of uh, Ken Copeland. But um, the Copelands have done a great job talking about how um, there is such power in our mouths. And um, when you think about it, it really makes sense. I mean, we know the scripture that says that there's life and death in the power of our, of our tongues and um, whatever, you know, will eat its fruit. But think about salvation. The way how we became saved is, is that we made a confession with our mouths and we believe that confession in our heart. We believe that Jesus died on the cross and we made that confession. And so um, the same thing can come with healing is that we got to make sure that we begin to confess the word of God over our lives. So if you don't remember anything, you can just say, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. OK, so that, those are some foundational scriptures. What I want to do right now is I want to provide examples of how Jesus healed. And the reason why I want to do that is because 
Um, you know, a lot of times the devil might say, you know, well, Jesus did that back in the day. Jesus doesn't care about you. He doesn't see you um, at your house. He, he doesn't care about you. But no, we know that God is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. Um, that as a joint heir of Jesus Christ, that as an inheritor um, in the blood and the family of Jesus, um, that, that power for healing exists for you today and that God loves you. And um, deliverance and healing is your portion, right? You're a child of God. God longs to heal you. So let's just look at a couple of examples. There are so many examples. I won't run through all of them. But um, we'll look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 30. And it says, And a great multitude came to him, talking about Jesus, bringing with them the lame, the maimed, the blind, the dumb, and many others. And they put them down at his feet and he healed them. So think about this. Um, Jesus was not a respecter of any persons. So the lame, people who were maimed, they were blind, they were dumb, and many others. Basically, whatever ailment needed healing, Jesus healed. We can look at Matthew 14 and 14. It says, when he went ashore and saw, and saw a great throng of people, he had compassion for them and cured their sick. It says Jesus had compassion and he cured all of them. And so Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If you're sick, Jesus has compassion for you and he longs to heal you. Okay, another um, scripture, Matthew 9 and 35, it says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the gospel and curing all kinds of diseases and every weakness and infirmity. What I'm trying to do is uh, show a pattern that anybody who was sick, that Jesus came into contact with, he healed. There wasn't anybody that left the presence of Jesus who was sick and they did not receive their healing, okay? Um, so we, when you come to Jesus, Jesus is there to heal. Another one, it says, um, in Acts 10 and 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power, how he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. Here's one thing that I really want to um, make sure that we understand today is that no sickness has come from God. Okay, um, any headaches, any illness, any disease. God is a good God, and um, it is not his will for you to be sick. It's not his will for you to be bound with any type of sickness. And there are some people who believe, okay, well, you know, I got cancer, and so, you know, God's just trying to, trying to, uh, I don't know, humble me, or I, I, got, I got this illness. You know, God is just, you know, trying to show his power through me. No, that is of the devil, okay? Um, God did not make you sick. God did not afflict you with any illness, okay? It is not the will of God for you to be sick. So we see all of these scriptures, especially you can look through the Gospels, where Jesus healed everyone, okay? So it's not God's will for you to be sick and then him to send out Jesus to heal you. Um, that would mean that God and Jesus were not working together. It would be like they were in opposition. God's desire is for you to be healed. So I want to eliminate that myth or that lie from the enemy where the enemy will make you think that God gave you this sickness. No, no, God is not glorified in our sickness, okay? 3 John chapter 2, it says, Beloved, I wished above all things that you would be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. Okay, God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be in good health. Jesus said, I came so that you can have life and, and have it more abundantly. Okay, you're not having an abundant life when you are sick and when you aren't feeling good. Okay, so that is, that's not the will of God. What we do know and how we know that sickness comes from the enemy is that it tells us that the thief comes not only but to steal, kill, and destroy, right? That's the enemy. That's Satan's plan. But Jesus said, I came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. So I believe that, you know, there's some people in the spirit realm just saying, okay, well, how do I get this sickness out? How do I get healed? And um, one of the things that I've learned, especially dealing with healing ministry, is that you got to believe the word of God. 
So we talked about the foundational scripture. First of all, you got to begin confessing that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And we know that even if it hasn't come into manifestation, you hold on to the word of God. You get you some scriptures that talk about healing. Um, there, are, there are so many scriptures, and I mean, you can just Google a list of healing scriptures, but there's a word where it talks about that God sent his word and they were healed. Um, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Um, look up some uh, old YouTube videos of Gloria Copeland, Ken Hagen, Dr. Oral Roberts, uh, Catherine Kuhlman, uh, ministries that focus on healing. If you need a, a healing touch from God, you get under that anointing of faith teaching to build your faith. Because here's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to wear you down and make you think that the Lord has forgotten about you. The enemy wants to wear you down and make you think that, oh, you're going to be sick all the rest of your life. The enemy wants to weigh you down and make you think that you'll always have this disease. You'll always have this sickness. You won't get completely healed, but the enemy is alive. Okay, we believe the word of God. And when you look at the scriptures of Jesus healing people, they were healed completely. Amen. It wasn't just a 50% healing or a 25% healing. No, they were healed completely. And some of you may have received some healing already in your body, but it's not the full manifestation. You believe God, I'm in agreement with you that you're going to be 100% healed because you're going to get some scriptures and you're going to confess those scriptures over your life. Amen. Amen. So um, let's look. Here's an, an, another point that I want to bring up, especially when it comes to our healing. James 4 and 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So sometimes we may feel like our body is coming under attack. You know, um, I might start feeling like a headache or start feeling some issues with my stomach, constipation or whatever it is, okay? I know that that's not from the Lord. So um, what the Bible says, resist the devil. It says, first of all, submit to God. So submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. I began speaking, oh no, Satan, you're not going to put that sickness on me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I see what you were trying to do and I will, I, I'm not going to stand for it. I plead the blood of Jesus over my body from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I declare that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. You know, you gotta, you gotta stand and fight. You don't just let the enemy come in and, and bring sickness on you. And I have to tell you, um, a couple of years ago, before I really began to study, um, you know, faith and, and a healing ministry, um, I remember I started to feel really sick in my body. Um, and this was during a very tough time. This was before I got married. I was single and um, was just really warring um, in the spirit. I had lost my job, um, was really feeling kind of depressed and low. Let me tell you something, when um, the enemy starts fighting you and you start feeling kind of spiritually low, emotionally low, you know your um, depression is starting to set in, the enemy is also going to try and come and knock you out and take you out physically. And I remember the Lord, just a word of knowledge, God began to speak to me and say, the enemy is going to try to bring sickness on you. But what you need to do is you need to get up and rebuke that sickness. You need to pray over yourself. You need to declare and decree that you're healed. Okay. Um, I just really felt like the Lord was saying, you need to really fight and war against the enemy. But what did I do? I gave in. I was like, no, I'm tired. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like rebuking the devil. I'm just tired. And I remember laying there in the bed and I just told God, no, I'm tired. I've been fighting so much. I'm just tired. And I will tell you less than 24 hours. I have like one of the worst flus I have ever had. I mean, I, it was it was a very bad sickness. Um, and that was just a reminder that God had given me kind of advance notice that my walls, um, you know, they were they were weak. Because I had already been fighting a spiritual battle and here comes the enemy trying to bring in sickness. And that is, that is what happened. So I share that testimony with you. Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee. You tell the devil, you're not going to take being sick. You're not going to allow it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things is, is that it's important for us to realize is that God is glorified when we are in good health. God is glorified um, when we are in good health. Um, and again, like I said earlier, sickness, it's not from the Lord. Sickness is from the enemy. 
And um, there's a, a scripture that I want to just uh, talk about a little bit in Matthew chapter 12. This is after Jesus heals the demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, okay? And so when people saw Jesus healing this blind and mute, demon-possessed man, the Pharisees, they are basically haters. They're like, you know what? The only way Jesus can do this is by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. You know, that's how Jesus gets his power from. And it says in verse 25, it says, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can then his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So basically what Jesus was saying is that, you know, his power comes from the Lord. And, um, you know, there are some people think that thinks that, you know, sickness is some uh, false humility, humble way to, to give God glory that, you know, God gave you this sickness to do something. I don't know. But that is that's not from the Lord. Sickness did not come from the Lord. God desires to heal you. God desires to see you walk in the fullness and the abundance of good health, right? He wants your soul to prosper as your health prospers. So um, we just want to put the kibosh in that in that myth right now that uh, sickness comes from the enemy because that is not true. What I want to encourage you to do is to get some scriptures that really speak to your situation. I'm always blessed by the testimony of Dodie Osteen, who is the uh, mother of Pastor Joel Osteen. And um, I believe it was in the 80s. Dodie Osteen um, was diagnosed with a very um, fast moving form of cancer. And um, she documents her testimony in a mini book where she talks about that she began to confess he uh, healing scriptures over her life every day. That she went through the Bible and just pulled out healing scriptures and she began to read those heal healing scriptures over herself. And um, in the she would insert her name in those scriptures. She also wrote how she... Um, she wrote letters to people asking for forgiveness because the Bible talks about um, that, you know, what can be a block to your healing is unforgiveness in your heart. So she began to just write letters to people, apologizing, letting people know, um, making sure that her heart was really clean and that she didn't harbor any unforgiveness. She also began to uh, put up pictures of herself in, um, at the prime of her health just pictures of her in her younger years. She wanted to see, you know, um, she wanted to just be surrounded by images of her being youthful and by, by full of vitality. She also said how, um, even diagnosed with her sickness, how she felt so weak, but she prayed for many other people. She would drive by their houses and she would ask them if she could pray for them. And she believes, and she talks about and shares in her book, about how all of these things really miraculously um, led to, to her healing. And um, in the book, it talks about she has no form of cancer um, in her body and God uh, miraculously healed her. And so um, she's just a great example. And she says that even now, I believe like 30 years later, she still confesses those healing scriptures over her life to this day, every day. It's like medicine. And the word of God, I believe in Proverbs 4, it talks about, you know, that the word is like medicine. God's word is like medicine. And so um, especially if you feel like you've been uh, getting a bad diagnosis or you've been uh, given a bad report by the enemy or you just want to make sure that you stay firmed up in your faith, your healing is going to come from God's word. God's word is, is full of vitamins and nutrients uh, for your body. Well, I have my husband here. He's videotaping. He's actually doing the Facebook Live for us. But Pastor Al, anything that you want to add that maybe I missed? Uh, I just want to add, uh, you know, we talk about physical healing um, all the time, but also God can heal our emotions. Uh, sometimes if we carry around a broken heart, a sick heart, and uh, God said in his word, you know, Jesus said that he was anointed to heal the brokenhearted. And a lot of times our emotional sickness leads to physical sickness. Uh, my wife alluded to unforgiveness, and that causes bitterness in the soul, which can lead to physical healing. A lot of times when Jesus healed, 
He said, your sins are forgiven. And along with that forgiveness came the physical healing along with that. So uh, I, I love how Jesus and, and everyone is qualified. Jesus said, greater works yes. you shall do when I go and send the Holy Spirit back. Yes. So we all have that authority as believers to declare healing, not over, only over ourselves, but over our children. I, I raised my children with, uh, with the fact of knowing that prayer works. And whenever they felt an illness coming, they would call daddy, daddy pray, daddy pray. And uh, I would pray for them, lay hands on them, send them scriptures, you know, if they were grown and not, not living with me, I would send them scriptures every day to uh, meditate on. And it works. Yeah. You know, I think that's a really good point um, that, you know, healing is, a, and the work of healing, God has given that to all of us as believers in Jesus Christ, that, you know, healing is not just limited to a pastor. It's not just limited to a doctor. But um, if you're filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, healing, God has given us um, the ability to heal, to lay hands on the sick and to see them recover. Like you said, like you referenced, Pastor Al, um, Jesus said before he left that greater signs shall you do. And I loved uh, John chapter 14. It says that whatever we ask in the name of the Father, he will do it so that God can be glorified. And God desires to be glorified through healing. So I just speak a great anointing to each and every one of you that's listening and that's watching this broadcast. I believe that God is going to send people across your path who are in need of healing. And maybe it may not be a big disease, but maybe someone says, you know what? I'm not feeling well. I got a headache. Someone's saying, I got a stomach ache. Whatever it is, you confess God's word over them. So I pray that this broadcast has blessed you. I pray that your faith has been increased uh, to just know that God is a healer, that he loves you. And God, God is blessed when his people are healed. So until next time, I want you to join us the same place same time next week. And until then, just continue to stay rooted in God's word and live in the overflow. Peace. Amen. All right, guys. Oh, let me see. Around. Hi, y'all. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. I pray that it's blessed you. All right. Remember that God has given you the anointing for healing. Okay. If you're a believer, you can lay hands on the sick that God desires to use us for healing. All right. I pray that this broadcast has blessed you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next week. Bye.